So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm I'm Marcy Cleveland. I'm the owner and operator of Green Building Specialists, and this is my partner Jeff. Uh, we both are certified through the Building Performance Institute. We are building analysts and envelope professionals, and uh, we both live in Pine Bush, so we're we're very local. This is our community. Uh, I actually spent a year on the board of our Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm a local realtor as well, and actually that's kind of how I got started in this business because as I was working with my clients, I realized how important energy efficiency and comfortable homes are, especially in the younger generation that now comprises the most home buyers out there. They're the predominant ones are our millennials, and they were born and raised on reduce, reuse, recycle. So sustainability is really ingrained in their brains. So I decided why not become an expert in energy efficiency so I can help my clients when we go out to look at homes. I can point out things that are wrong with them that they should fix whenever they buy the home and then once they buy the home then I can help them continue on that journey. Um, and, help Jeff? The, and help the value. Yeah. Too, yes. Too, too. Yeah, we're going to get to that too. So <laughs> if a person's buying a home and it has a good situation, you can say, hey, by the way, this is particularly good. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I've uh, been doing hundreds of audits on homes over the past 10 decades, and mostly in New York State, but Ohio and elsewhere in the Northeast as well. Uh, I'm currently working on a, a heat pump pro a group that's working at ways to electrify and decarbonize the whole Northeast region. <laughs> So uh, trying to work with utilities and states and consumer groups and community organizations to uh, figure out the, the smoothest way forward. And Jeff also um, worked for the company that kind of ran the New York Clean Heat program. So he's very well versed in all of the rebates that, that heat pumps have right now in our state. So, all right. So those are our introductions. Here's basically our agenda. We're gonna talk a little bit about the big why. I wanted to see, show of hands, how many people are very much aware that electrification of homes is being something that we're all being pushed towards? Yeah, through advertising, through funding. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about you know the big why. Why are we doing that? Then we're going to talk about awe, and I gave everybody this little postcard here. We're gonna talk about why I came up with that little slogan um, for people to help them understand why you want to tackle your projects in a certain order. Then very briefly, Building Science 101, it's going to be super high level, but just some terms I want to throw out and concepts for everyone. Then I'm going to turn it over to Jeff, who's going to talk about what to expect doing an, during an energy assessment, what is weatherization, and some just do-it-yourself tips on how to save energy. We'll look at the benefits of the modern all-electric home, and then how do we pay for all these improvements? We got to do them. How do we pay for it? What, what kind of funding is available? What kind of financing is available? And then of course we wanna save some time for questions because I know you guys are probably gonna have a lot of them. All right, so why electrify? If you look at this chart, you can see that in New York State, 32% of our greenhouse gas emissions come from the building industry. And that's primarily because we're using fossil fuels to heat our homes and our hot water. So. That's huge. If we can knock out fossil fuels in the building industry, we just knocked out 32% of our source of greenhouse gas emissions. The state realizes this is a big thing, which is why there's so much money out there to get people off of fossil fuels to heat their homes. Heat pumps, there's a lot of incentives, rebates for that. Also, we're seeing coming down from the federal level through the Inflation Reduction Act, a lot of tax incentives, a lot of point of sale rebates as well for heat pumps and heat pump hot water heaters, most efficient way of heating homes or heating your water. So we have something called the Climate Act in New York State, it was passed in 2020. And in that act, we talk about how we have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 85% by the year 2050. Governor Holko has a um, 2 million home initiative by 2030 in which she says we need to have in New York State 1 million homes that are fully electrified and 1 million homes that are all electric ready. So big initiative there. The state also just passed a few months ago the All Electric Buildings Act. So any new construction home that's seven stories or less by 2026 has to be all electric. There's not allowed to be any type of fossil fuel appliance in those new homes. So this is something that the state is taking very seriously. So, what are all the 
things that we can electrify in our lives, in our homes, where we live? Well, the first thing that you can do is purchase renewable energy. Anybody that's a utility rate payer has the right to choose your ESCO, which stands for your electric service company. Find an electric service company that gets their electricity from hydro, wind, solar, any renewable source. So you just choose it. Your, your, your electricity is still gonna be delivered through NYSAG, through Orange and Rockland, through Central Hudson, but the supply, you're buying the supply from a renewable source. So check into that. Um, one of the ones that, I have a friend of mine that it's his hobby is to like look at all the different ESCOs out there. Inspire Clean Energy, they're a B Corp, and they have the, currently they have the best rates. So in that resource list that I'm gonna send out to everybody, I'll make sure you guys have that if you wanna look into it. The next thing, electrical service. So if we're adding a bunch of electrical stuff to our otherwise not all electric homes, you might have to upgrade your electrical panel. If you have 100 amp service, you're gonna need to bump that up to 200 amp just so you have the, the circuitry that you're gonna need to run heat pumps and everything else. There is money in the Inflation Reduction Act to help you do that. Um, so we'll talk about that when we, a little bit later. All right, number three, where is number three? I never can see. So heat pump for heating and cooling. Now heat pumps can be two different types. They can either be air source heat pumps or they can be ground source, which is commonly known as geothermal. People call them geothermal. That's just a ground source um, heat pump. You probably have seen them. The mini split ductless units are the, the ones that are on the wall, or you could have a centrally ducted system. So if you have a home that already has ducts in place because you have a forced air system, you just get rid of that gas furnace or that oil furnace, you put an electric heat pump and it pumps it right through. Go ahead. I don't know what a heat pump is. Okay. <laughs> Jeff? Oh, uh, sure. Um, <laughs> so, you know, a refrigerator makes the inside of your refrigerator cold. It has a heat pump in it. Um, it's just taking, um, um, boy, this is, <laughs> I should have this down pat here. Um, it's a it's an, you know, an air conditioner. When you put an air conditioner in your in your window or whatever, it's taking cool from the outside. Even though it's warmer outside, it's taking it's it's extracting heat from your house and taking it because outside. It's compressing it and taking uh, yeah. and and putting that heat outside. Uh, in the same way, a heat pump does the same thing as an air conditioner. It just goes both ways. It can provide. It's like an electric heater. It's not like an electric heater. Uh -huh. It it works three times more efficiently than an electric heater. So your your electric bill will go down with a heat pump installed um, significantly, by usually by half or sometimes more. They're kind of magic um, how they work. So they're just taking Honestly. they're taking heat from the outside. On a day like today, I have a heat pump at my house. It's a cold climate heat pump. It can take, uh, even though it's 20 degrees, zero degrees outside. There's it still heat still, in the air. It can still take yes. heat out of the air outside and condense it down and push it into the house. So my house is still warm even though it's freezing outside. Mm. And in, this, in the same way, if you don't have air conditioning, they, uh, when it's time for air conditioning, you flip a switch and now they're air conditioners. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's a good thing to point out is because people hear heat pump and they think, oh, it's just a heater. No, no, it's also cools. So one of the major reasons why I got heat pumps is because I never had air conditioning and it was always very very hot in my home and I was like well this kind of sort of you know kills two birds with one stone having one appliance that does both so um, for people that don't have any type of air conditioning this is a bonus and plus now you are heating your home very very efficiently if you look uh, around the place when you're driving you will start to see them all over the place yeah. once you start looking they look like a thin little air conditioner on the side of the house usually they're uh, the, the fan is pointing sideways, that's a good indication that that's a heat pump and not an air conditioner. Mm -hmm. um, some of them blow up, but most of them uh, blow up to the side. And they look like that, the little, little thing on the side, they might be mounted on a wall and you all of a sudden like, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. So with that theme, let's talk about the heat pump water heater. So a heat pump water heater looks very much like a standard water heater tank except for it has this little mini heat pump on top of it. So very efficiently, it's now heating the water through the heat pump technology. Lots of rebates and incentives out there for that as well. Um, electric cooking, 
we really want people to get off gas cooking, whether it's propane or natural gas. And I, I've seen frowns and a lot of people are like, I can't live without my gas stove. I will tell you, if you've never cooked on a magnetic induction stove, you will be very impressed at how quickly they respond. They respond just like gas, but they're safer because if you don't have a pot making that connection to the magnetic cooktop, it doesn't work. There's no hot surface. You can take a pot off a magnetic induction stove and very quickly put your hand right there. So it's safer from that aspect. There's also health implications that there's been a lot of research that's been released about nitrogen dioxide that's still released into the air, methane, and of course, with methane being a, a greenhouse gas, you know, it's once again contributing to the problem that we're having with climate change um, in, in emissions. So we would like to see people get off of the gas cooking. Um, once again, there's money available to help you do that. All right, um, we are up to f uh, six, electric, electric clothes dryer. There are some amazing new technologies that are coming out. Jeff knows a lot about these because he's been researching them. There's an all-in-one unit now that is a washer dryer heat pump. The heat pump is drying the clothes and it's a unit where you put all your clothes in, you turn it on, it washes. When it's done washing, it then flips over to the dry cycle, it dries. And because it's a heat pump, you don't have to vent it to the exterior and you don't have to have a special electrical plug. You can use a standard outlet. Did I get that right? Yeah. All right. right. So there's some really cool things coming out with that um, in the whole clothes uh, laundry world. Uh, electric vehicles. If, um, you know, if you're in the market for a new car or even a used car, consider a used EV or even a plug-in hybrid. Most people don't drive more than 70 miles a day in their commute, and most of the plug-in hybrids can get you that range on EV mode. So um, I have an electric, electric vehicle. I've been driving it for three years. Love it. Um, now we are up to number nine, rooftop solar or ground mount solar, if you can get it if your house has the ability to put it in the yard or on the roof check into it there's a 30 percent tax incentive federally and you can get up to five thousand dollars through new york state as well um, to put solar and listen if you've got an all-electric house why not be producing your own renewable energy to fuel your own home um, i have panels and everything in my house is electric i'm covering my electric load by about 75 percent so I'm only using 25% from the question. question. Yes. The question is, we just recently converted to, you know, natural gas. Mm. And the whole house was not electric. Mm. And we thought the electric is, you know, the bill was like outrageous. And all of this is our first month. Yeah. And now I'm hearing it's something totally different opposite. Let me ask and you, just, uh, did you have electric baseboard resistant heat? Because that may have been one reason why your electric bill was so high because it's a very, well, electric heat is um, very efficient. It's 99% efficient. It's not energy efficient in, in that it takes a lot um, with the baseboard heaters. So, so darn it, should have got in touch with you before that happened. Right, right. Totally opposite. <laughs> Is sure. the town permitting a knock on the roof? So each town is different. I know um, it's a little difficult in Gardner to get a ground mount approved. Um, I'm not sure town of Crawford where they are and how they feel about that. Um, it, it is municipal specific in who's going to put up a stink with, you know, they want you to have trees so tall in front of it. They don't want people to see it. It's hard. I don't know the exact answer to that. So, but you can, it, depending on where you are, if you're, you know, got 125 acres and you sit way back off the road, you know, a ground mount might be the way to go because you can orient the panels to the sun to get the best efficiency use out of the panels themselves. And another option may be to put up a pole barn and now you just have a roof and they're going on the roof. Yeah, and then you have the solar canopies. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's solar canopies <laughs> yeah. that you can put on a carport. Absolutely, you can yeah. go that route as well. I don't think they're permitting that. Just for their <laughs> so, 
Um, I do have a really good solar company that does a lot of the canopies in the ground mount that if you wanted to talk to them to ask them those questions, they would obviously have more experience because they're processing the, you know, yeah. the permitting and everything. Sam? There is a ground mounted solar panel array in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. So I assume that means that it's acceptable to yeah. do in Shanghai. My panels are on my roof, mm -hmm. but that guy has a big array mm -hmm. of panels. On right the, on the ground. Yeah, and there's um, you know, if you go up Bruin Turnpike out to Walk Hill, somebody's got them right there. So we know Shungum, but Crawford, I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, and our last thing, home storage battery. So this is where climate resilience is a thing in your home when you have a battery, because the beautiful thing about having a wall battery, if you have solar panels, is during the day when the sun is out, you're charging that battery. You're banking all of that energy. <laughs> in the battery and then at night you can flip it over so you're not pulling from the grid and you're just sucking off of your battery your energy also if the grid goes down you've got energy stored there you can now power your all electric home 30 percent tax incentive on these two to put these in so you know i do want to say a lot of people make the mistake of thinking oh i have solar panels if the electricity goes off i'm good that's not true that's not true. That's not how it works. You're producing your own electric, but you don't. If you don't have a way to store that, that when you you don't have that grid anymore, you can't access it. So, um, and the cool thing I have to say about storage is some of the EVs that are coming online, you can use your EV battery to bank your energy, and the F one fifty Lightning with a special plug you can reverse it and power your house. So, um, yeah, there's some amazing new stuff coming coming up, and I, it's very, very exciting. It won't drain the whole battery down. It'll take it down. Yeah, there's settings that you can do on the car. The software allows you to say, okay, I don't want to drain my car battery because I need to be able to go somewhere. You, you can set it to, like, 20% or something like that. But we're kind of getting off topic. But anyway, so there's a lot. There's a lot we can do here. All right. Battery technology is really changing fast, and the concept of energy storage is not only with electricity, but it's also with heat and cool, even. So now there are some developments that are saying, well, we, we for some larger buildings, where we're going to have a large uh, container, and it's going to be holding heat of some kind. And we can use that heat for the morning startup when things get going at a school, at your house, where things you want to increase the heat. And so uh, lots of creative solutions coming along right now with, with battery storage of, of thermal or, or electricity. So we're going to move along because we're running a little behind because um, we've got a lot to get through. So you, the good news is you don't have to do it all at once. So there's a lot to do, but you don't have to do it all at once. And they're uh, rewiring America. I want everyone to know about this organization because they're amazing and they've done a lot of work already. Um, I'm going to just link out to this real quick because I want to show you. They have some wonderful guides that you can download um, and look through that will. It can't. Oh, it didn't go out. Look, Je don't say it, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff said it wasn't going to work. Hey. It's still not working. It worked before. Anyway, so I will put that. Um, this guide here okay. you can download it and um, they also have a renter checklist as well if you don't own your home so that'll be in the resource list so now this assess weatherize and electrify and I came up with this because what we were finding with some of our assessment clients is that some people skipped right to this step first and they went ahead and they electrified um, and they didn't get an assessment to tell them, oh, by the way, your attic is all full of holes. And um, they ended up with a heat pump system that was way oversized for what they really needed. And they ended up with way too many solar panels. They didn't need to spend as much money as they did on the solar panels. If they had just got an assessment first to tell them that they needed some insulation and some air sealing, before they did the electrification. So I tell everybody, be in awe of this journey that you're getting ready to start on. Assess weatherize weather and electrify. Because you have to think of the house as a system. Um, you know, no one component stands alone. 
and electric all these electrification appliances are designed to work with homes that are energy efficient they work better and more effectively if they're not struggling to keep your house warm because you're leaking here you're leaking there the cold's coming in through the basement it's going out the top so get that assessment you know see see what's going on first before you do the other measures so that brings us to a little bit of building science 101 and i want to talk about is my there we oh we can't see it nope no you can't see it on the screen i wanted to talk about the building envelope because that's a that's a term that you're going to probably hear a lot somebody's going to say well your building envelope's leaky or your house shell is leaky well what exactly does that mean so this red outline here that's your thermal boundary of your home you don't want any penetrations in that because what happens um is this really cool phenomenon called staff effect and everybody knows heat rises well why does heat rise exactly it's because this thing called staff effect and as temperatures become greater between outside and inside if it's 68 degrees inside but it's 10 degrees outside this effect becomes stronger so it's the action of cold air of warm air rising and cold air from below coming up and it's being pushed up through your house now if you have leaks as this pressure differential becomes stronger as temperatures lower and you want to stay warm in the house then the cold air really wants to come in and it really wants to go out the top so we want to make sure you don't have any holes so that cold air can't come in and your warm air can't go out but there are other reasons why we want to make sure that that thermal boundary is contained and one of them is water water is the enemy of homes and water vapor is carried through convection or air movement so if air is moving into your home and that water, that moisture is being carried into your home, it gets into your wall assemblies, it gets into your roof where it has the ability to condense. Condens condensation behind your walls leads to mold and problems and mildew. Bad, bad for your health. Bad for respiratory. You don't want mold in your house. So number one, we want to keep the we want to keep any kind of moisture outside of your thermal boundary. But other things, if you've got holes, you've got Mice coming in. We're just talking about mice. Rodents, you know, they're getting in those little cracks and crevices. You have to worry about feces, urine, that's contaminating your air. Um, outdoor air pollution gets in, affects your indoor air quality. So aside from losing your energy, you know, there are other things that you're trying to keep outside by tightening up this envelope. All right, let me just make sure I got everything I wanted to say there. Oh, one other thing I just wanted to miss, mention, because as we start talking about, let's make this house really tight, people are like, oh, you can't have a house that's too tight because the house needs to breathe. No, the house doesn't need to breathe. It's the people and the occupants inside the house that need to breathe. So as we make things tighter, we deal with that through mechanical ventilation. Um, you know, those are fans that are on timers that are automatically exchanging air so you're getting this natural exchange of air but the nice thing about the mechanical ventilation is you can also filter it and and you can control the humidity through mechanical ventilation so that is a big misconception don't think that a house can be too tight one one other thing there is that most all the houses that we do audits on and and, and help people tighten up most all of them you can tighten up a lot and you're still not going to get anywhere to the point where you're it's too tight <laughs> yeah. it takes a while it can happen but it's probably not going to get there on most houses yeah especially with how old most of the houses in our area are to start with okay so here's some things to watch for if you're experiencing high utility bills if you're just feeling very uncomfortable in your house you can't maintain the temperature when you set the thermostat to 70 or wherever and you can't keep it there if you notice mild or mold issues, if you're starting to have some health effects, pretty good indication you need to have somebody come and take a look at your house and see what's going on. And with that, oh. Jeff's going to speed through what to expect okay. in an energy assessment. How are folks doing? Good. Okay, well, I'm going to stand here though. Um, so I wanted to run through what we would typically do at an energy assessment and what if someone else is going to come to do an energy assessment at your house, what you, what you can expect. Uh, one, it's it's a bit of a doctor's checkup for your home. That's one way to think about it. I, I like that analogy. 
we're usually at a space for two to four hours if, if both of us go, maybe a little longer if just one of us go. We take hundreds of pictures um, and we look at the whole house. We uh, walk around the outside, go everywhere from inside the attic as far as we can get down to the lowest possible spot in the house that we can get into. Uh, sometimes the dirtier, the more fun for us. Um, and and we're, we're gonna check uh, every room for evidence of moisture for ev you know, what's going on in that room. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk with you to see how your experience of the house has been when where are the particularly cold or hot spots. And we also spend the time before we come over to your house even to, uh, uh, and an auditor should do this, uh, talk with you about how your experience is with the house. What are your concerns? Um, we measure the windows and get go around the entire house and uh, measure the entire entire house. We also look if you have blueprints or a house inspection uh, that was done when the house was purchased. We'll take a look at that. Uh, we identify any health and safety hazards, and this is a very important uh, for us being certified. This is an important thing for us to do. We'll check for um, moisture, mold issues. We'll check for carbon monoxide. We'll check for um, gas, leaks. Uh, gas leaks and some electrical. Uh, electrical problems that we might see uh, and we'll check the efficiency of the appliances or anything that's burning uh, gas or oil and then we get into the fun yeah. building envelope diagnostics we call this in the biz they call it the red door of truth <laughs> uh, this is a blower door that we would put over the front door or a side door and we pushes air out of the house so that we depressurize the house it's just it's enough that you could you won't even feel it, but it creates, anywhere there's a hole in the house, it'll start pulling air in. It really helps us see then with the aid of that, plus the infrared camera, plus smoke pens, as that puff out a little bit of smoke, plus pressure diagnostics, closing doors, and seeing where the pressure differences are, we can really start to understand where the leaks are in the house. Um, if we find a room that, oh wow, this is really, this is really, there's a big pressure difference. We can, we know, uh, let's go find out why this is. That's a, that's a home run for us to be able to seal that air leak off and really help, uh, help your house tighten up. So it's, it's a lot of cool, cool nerding out on, on physics at that point. <laughs> and so, if, excuse mm -hmm. me, I'm sorry. So when you do a home assessment, mm -hmm. who pays for that? Uh, so Marcy? So, um. There are free assessments available through New York State. We are a participating contractor in the free assessment program. Um, I will tell you that the free assessment is very basic. Um, it doesn't include all the fun gadgetry. Um, so what I often tell people is we use that as like a $200 discount on our more comprehensive services. So yes, if you want the free one, we can come do the free one. It's gonna be, we're kind of gonna be in and out. It's just sort of a paper checklist of like, do you have this, do you have that, this, that, and that. So if you get a, a rebate from, or not the help from New York State, then mm -hmm. that's probably an income guideline or a house according to how old the house is. So the free assessment is anybody in New York State can have a free assessment. There's funding for that. So it's kind of, you know, if you want it, get it before the funding runs out. So you would work with someone like us, we're a participating contractor, to be able to get that. Um, there are some income eligible programs through New York State that also get you, if you qualify, very reduced or even free weatherization measure, measures that would be, that would come out of the audit. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, it's a basic one, the free one is free, it's basic and sometimes you get what you pay for. Yeah. And uh, free is exactly worth that sometimes. <laughs> and I will mention, we are, if I'm not mistaken, the only independent assessment company that through NYSERDA in that we're not doing the insulation work. We're not doing the heat pump installs. So we're giving you a very thorough independent view of what you got. Um, sometimes, you know, and I can't say for sure, but if you've got somebody that's coming in that's an insulation contractor and they're also an auditor, you know, they want to sell you something. Sure. We're not looking to sell you anything. Yeah. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, that's a, so also what, what an auditor would do is review the electric and heating fuel bills to see if there are any aberrations to see what, like, uh, is, this, is this a normal curve or what's, what are your prices, what are your costs? And when we get that all together and at the end have a chance to talk with you, 
uh, and then uh, about about what our initial thoughts are. Then we take all that home, write it up, put it into a nice bow package in a web web product that uh, we'll send to you, and that has a list of prioritized recommendations, health and safety concerns. It's all it's all uh, it, it's very nice, and some contractors that we've worked with also like it in that they can see clearly what our recommendations are. So it's, it's for you to use as, as you need for DIY, DIY projects or for a contractor. And so we're going to show you, I got it. Okay. Yep. This is kind of just <laughs> a little bit of what our web-based report looks like. Um, it starts out with, hey, start here, here's your priority list. <laughs> and it's, it's a customized list of things that we would say, this is where you should focus your energies and, and, your, and your finances right here. Uh, because you're going to have the biggest payback yeah, and if right the, up front. And if someone's detail-oriented, we can go details. And if they're not, they're, they're just like, just tell me. And then, okay, well, let's get to it. <laughs> All right, we're going to quickly get to weatherization because okay. we so still have to cover weather, financing. <laughs> weatherization, <laughs> yeah, weatherization, as you have, I'm sure, gathered now, is, is making your house comfortable and protected from cold, heat, wind, um, and, and snow and such. So these are typical pictures of what weatherization would entail. Uh, one, this is a lovely clean attic here. <laughs> so this gentleman is sealing off all those spots between the, the living space and the attic that might be leaking, that uh, houses before even 2020 were just not having these seals. Um, weather stripping, if you're all familiar around the doors, they can be oftentimes damaged. Um, that's, a, that's one we often see. Do any of you in your basements, can you see, uh, do they not have a roof and so you can see the joist, not a roof, sorry, a ceiling in your basement so you can see this, uh, what's called a rim joist above when you look up that. Yeah. So it, if you can see wood or if you see just shoved in fiberglass or something, that's not quite done right. <laughs> so one air sealing measure would be to cut foam board and place it in there and seal it in place. That's a, that's a do it yourself project as well if you're ambitious. Um, putting in gaskets or helping windows, not the glass pane itself, but around the window to keep them more, more uh, leak proof as well. For insulation, I'm sure you've all seen some images of spray foam. This is one type of spray foam. Cellulose blown in. I love this stuff. It's ground up paper and cardboard treated with borate for a fire preventative. Um, it, and insects and rodents typically don't like it either. So there are these products that are blown in. It could be chopped fiberglass. It could also be um, a new timber product that's made with leftover tailings from uh, lumber mills, treated also with an anti anti inflame, uh, anti flame, flame retardant. <laughs> um, it's fiberglass, I'm sure you've all seen. And there are all kinds of products to put in the walls. Anytime you all are doing a renovation, please take the moment, take the opportunity to upgrade your insulation. Yeah, if you're, anybody's replacing their siding, that's an excellent time to either add exterior insulation or, or, or drill holes and blow in insulation before you put that new siding on. We'll be driving around and I'll see people getting siding put on. I'm like, Oh, oh, and I just want to like, oh, don't, you know, don't do it without doing something extra because that's a great opportunity. And roofs also, if you're replacing your roof, you can do some extra insulation on top of your sheathing, then put another layer of sheathing on it, and you can get an extra R20 out of that. You have a, yeah, I you mean, have a condition. yeah, so that's, a, that's another opportunity. All right, so our next thing, we were gonna talk about easy DIY projects, but unfortunately we are running late and I wanna make sure we get to the funding piece and questions that you all might ask. So I'm just gonna run, up, put them up and all. run through these really quick. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, these are some things that you can do yourself. Um, you know, switch out any incandescent and halogen light bulbs with LEDs. You know, check your weather stripping. E easy to redo, weather stripping on a door. Um, you know, you can, Fix your gutters and extend downspouts, honestly, is one of the things that it's, you really don't think of it from an energy efficiency standpoint, but it's more of a building health situation. Remember we talked about water being the number one enemy of buildings. If those downspouts are going right down next to your foundation, you're just beating and beating and beating on your exterior, uh, on your foundation. It's not good for the, the um, overall health of the building. Go ahead and list them. Yeah. Oh, 
uh, when we would be talking with you or when any auditor would be talking with you, they should be able to get a sense of what you'd be interested in having as a DIY or what uh, you, you, you and your friends might be interested in tackling, learning a little bit through some YouTube videos <laughs> and doing yourself versus having a handy person come over and, and, and knock out some of these projects. That's, uh, so one thing I enjoy when I'm working with people is to say is to get a sense from them what are they interested in take, tackling themselves. Um, the Department of Energy has a great website. There's a lot of really good resources out there, and again, this will be something that I put on the list that I send you. The the Energy Saver they have like a tips on energy, saving energy and money at home. It's a little guidebook. It talks about a lot of these things we have listed here, and so it's almost a checklist form you can just go through and click off things. So. There's a lot that you can do yourself. Yeah. All right. Now, I just want to talk. We're going to switch places. <laughs> so an energy all-electric home. Obviously, we're learning that it's less costly to operate. You know, save money in your pocket. It's more comfortable. It's just going to be a more comfortable home to live in year-round. It's healthier and it's safer. It's safer because we're taking fossil fuels out of your home. Fossil fuels. The incomplete combustion of a fossil fuel leads to carbon monoxide. But guess what? You don't have a fossil fuel appliance in your home, you don't have to worry about carbon monoxide anymore. So it's definitely safer. Um, all electric homes are smarter, they're more valuable. Real estate, um, some real estate research is showing that homes that are high performing homes that have energy efficiency measures in them are more desirable. And so if you put one home next to another that are similar in every other aspect, but one's been upgraded and is more efficient and is electric, buyers are gonna want that home more. And it shows, the, the um, research was done through the Appraisal Institute, and they actually were able to say that a high-performing home, energy-efficient home, is 5% more valuable than a similar non-electric home. So keep that in mind. And of course, these homes are obviously better for people, and they're better for the planner. So real quick, just talking about electric homes being smarter homes. They're connected. This We're living in a very connected world. So when you have all of these electric appliances, for example, I can set my water heater from my phone right now if I wanted to. If I knew all three of my kids were home taking a shower right now and I'm gonna go home and take a shower, I'm gonna be like, that's going in high demand mode right now because I don't wanna run out of water when I get home. Um, I can shut it off. If I go on vacation, I'm like, oh, darn it. You know, I'm going to be gone for a week. My, my hot water doesn't need to be heating. I can just turn it off from my phone. And so we're seeing a lot of ability to do that um, and control our energy usage through web-enabled products. Um, there's even magnetic induction stoves that are coming out now that uh, they have batteries built right into them. So if electricity goes off, you can still cook with them. And you can control certain functions, set the oven, from your phone. So it's, I mean, it's really amazing the amount of technology that's happening around all of these new devices and how it's gonna be changing our, our lives. But smarter homes are electric homes. All right, now, the big question is, okay, that's great, Marcy. How do we pay for all this stuff you're telling me to do? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of programs through NYSERDA. And um, if you go to this website, you're gonna have a list and it's gonna ask you, well, who are you? Are you a renter? Are you a homeowner? And you click on that and it's gonna take you to all the programs that are available through NYSERDA. If you are income, there are income qualified programs called Empower Plus, and you can get a lot of these measures paid for completely. However, if you don't income qualify, you can get in the Comfort Home Program, which will save you up to $4,000 off of insulation and weatherization and window installation. Um, there's also the heat pump program. The clean heat program through NYSERDA helps with uh, rebates. I don't know, Jeff, if you wanna just talk about the rebate program for clean heat real quick. Um, you can get probably 20 to 40% off of an install, 20 to 30% off of an install of a heat pump uh, for your house. Um, it, that might typically go between 12 and $20,000 quarter of that, they get a quarter of that and get paid a rebate. Um, and then that contractor who is putting it in can help work with you to see what the cost offset would be from what you are, would be otherwise otherwise paying that you're now not paying as a result of the efficiency. Um, the Department of Energy has a weatherization program. If you know anybody that's on heat 
or SNAP or any of these government subsidized programs, they will automatically qualify for the Weatherization Assistance Program, also known as WAP. That's 100%. They're going to they're gonna do all the weatherization work at no cost for those folks. And I just always wanted to mention that key pump water heater rebates are still very good. I think $1,000 through the utilities yeah. right now. So these, these machines, these key pumps that can heat your hot water uh, might sell for a little over 2000 so with a thousand dollars off, you're right in the range of what it would otherwise cost to get a water heater replacement. <laughs> and if you're working with a NYSERDA participating contractor, they all know what these incentive programs are. They're processing these day in, day out. So they, they're going to be able to guide you. I mean, some other financing measures that you can look into if you're purchasing a home, you can get an energy efficient um, mortgage, which is a, a mortgage product. Um, that will bake in some costs so you can do these improvements. Uh, you can check into uh, refinancing a HELOC or a home energy, um, a home equity line of credit. Now, this was really cool because I looked this up last night and I was, gonna, I was gonna link out to it, but I don't think that's working. Um, I will include the link. The Smart Energy Loan through NYSERDA. If you live in our area, you automatically qualify for an interest rate of 3.49%, which, is a pretty good interest rate, and that's for a loan up to $25,000. Uh, payback terms are 5, 10, and 15 years. I mean, their savings account's paying 5%. So if you needed maybe an extra $10,000 because you wanted to put a heat pump system in, you know, consider pairing that with a loan and the incentives, and you know, it's not a bad deal. <laughs> it's not a bad deal. Um, now, the Inflation Reduction Act. This is our big federal uh, program that was passed um, last year, and there's, or in 2022, there's a lot of funding to get people uh, into electric homes and make these improvements. Available now are the 25C and 25D tax credits. You do have to obviously have a tax liability to be able to use them. Um, but there's a ton of them. When I started to talk about what some of them were, the, the solar panels, but there's also tax incentives for um, doing weatherization measures. I think it's like $1,600 a year, and they reset every year. So if you did $1,600 worth of weatherization this year, you can take a tax, uh, you know, ta tax credit for it this year, and then maybe next year you do the basement this year, maybe next year you do the attic. So you, they, it resets each year, but there's a limit on how much you can do each year. I really, really want to see if I can get this link uh, working because this is pretty impressive. Nope, didn't do it. That's so weird. I just tr I tried this before we started and it worked. There's a Murphy's Law variant. Je Jeff jinxed me because he said it's not going to work. Are you in uh, presentation mode? Like I'm not where sure. Where you can read your own notes? Yes. Is that the reason yeah. I can't do it? Yes, yeah, oh. so you have to be out of that. Just go out of that and go into a regular slideshow. Or just finish and we'll okay. later. <laughs> yeah, I can pull it. I can pull it up at the end. All right, because I do want to show you this I this IRA calculator. Um, so Rewiring America has this calculator. Where you go in, you put in where you live, how many people live in your home, how much do you make, and it spits out a list. Okay, this is what you're going to be eligible for, and it's a real easy way to see what kind of funds will be applicable to your situation. The here rebates are the Home Electrification and Appliance Rebate Program. Those are gonna be point of sale rebates. So you might be able to go to Home Depot and say, I'm gonna buy a magnetic induction stove. And there's gonna be an $840 point of sale rebate right there on that stove. So um, that's coming with here. Her rebates are home energy rebate <laughs> rebates that are performance based. So when I look at this information, this is what happens to me. Oh, now I can't go forward for some reason. I end up like this. I'm like, what? I don't know. I'm like here and I need to go there, but I don't know how to get there. So it is very confusing because there's, a, there's just a lot out there to figure out. I will tell you guidance is coming soon. Um, the, the IRA funding is, is pretty brand new. And I sort of just finished putting in an application to the DOE this month. And so there's $317 million in New York State allocated for these two rebate programs. 
Now that's for administrative costs and incentives. NYSERDA thankfully has realized that to put two additional programs out there with all the other programs that they already have in place is just going to confuse consumers and contractors. Like we're all gonna to wanna to pull our hair out. So they've decided they're going to take this money and the programs and they're gonna roll it into what is already there. So they're just gonna put more funding into the programs already available. All that's coming fourth quarter of this year. But the tax incentives, you can take advantage of those right now. So if you do a heat pump right now, if the audit, there's you can there's a hundred and fifty dollar tax credit for doing an energy assessment. So it's thirty percent of whatever it costs you to do an energy assessment up to a cap of hundred and fifty dollars. So if you spend five hundred dollars on an energy assessment, you're getting one hundred and fifty back on a tax um, credit. So most important thing, make sure you're working with a nice sort of participating contractor on any of the work that you do. Like I said, they're breathing, they're living these incentive programs. Um, yeah, they know what's for, going on. There's some are vetted for um, reliability and, and right. accuracy. Right. So if you if you have somebody come out to talk to you about putting a heat pump in and you say, okay, well tell me about the incentives that NYSERDA is giving you. And they're like, what? We don't, we're not in that program. You know, we don't participate in clean heat. Move on to somebody else. All right. Um, NYSERDA also has these regional clean energy hubs. Ours is run through the CCE program in Dutchess County. Um, it's called Mid-Hudson Smart Choices. You can reach out to them at any time and talk to a free energy coach. If you have any questions, you're like, I don't know how to fill out this application. I'm, I'm getting confused, what do I do? You can reach out to them. They're trained, they know where to send you and how to help you. So help is available. You know, you don't have to stand there and with your head spinning like that, even though it might feel like that for a little bit. All right, I wanted to save some time for questions. We have seven <laughs> minutes left. So, fire away. <laughs> you, you, you explained everything. <laughs> no, I know there are questions. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, are there different programs or specialized programs for new build? So, there are their new build um jeff correct me if i'm wrong there's clean heat for new construction uh, correct it, you it can depends get depends on the size okay so you could you could get uh rebates on um installation you, you absolutely can get rebates on new construction yes yeah. whether what program it depends on the size but yes there are rebates absolutely the so ira funding yeah no that's for existing there's no benefits for new construction through IRA. It's okay. it's specifically in place to help existing homes become better, okay. not to make new homes that don't exist better. <laughs> you should be doing that anyway. Go ahead. Is there any data <clears throat> available? Like my home is built in 1960, uh -huh. so it has all the issues you were talking about. Yeah. So, but my electric bill is already so high, and lately, like all of our bills, it's gone through the roof. So. I'm yeah. having a hard time thinking that this can really save me money, and I'm in Walker Valley, so our power goes out every time you turn around. Mm -hmm. So those are two things. I do have a gas stove. I won't, won't get rid of it. <laughs> I'd have to really be convinced. Um, yeah. But I do have a sol little solar generator that mm -hmm. I bought that I use to run certain things or whatever, and you know we've got an outdoor generator. Um, I would love to do all this, but right. is there something we can see that's like real concrete over time? How do you recover those costs? Is it 10 years recovery? Is it? or at least to break even. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the so things that we offer that's it's, it's not part of the NYSERDA assessment program, but we can do what's called a Department of Energy Home Energy Score. And what that is, is that's looking at your home from an asset standpoint only. Like, what are you heating with? Mm -hmm. How are your windows? Um, you know, what kind of insulation do you already have? All that data we collect, we put it into a modeling tool that's developed by the Department of Energy and it spits out a report that says, on a scale of one to 10, you're here now. However, if you do these recommendations, your score might jump to an eight. And this is how much you can expect to save annually if you do these recommendations. The DOE modeling tool will not give you any recommendation that doesn't have a 10 year payoff or, or less. Okay. So, I mean, that is something that could be helpful, um, but even, you know, even if you didn't change anything in your house, making your house more energy efficient should lower your electric bill because the cheapest energy is the energy you don't use in the first place. So, 
Yeah, I mean, everybody can benefit from from having a better building envelope. And there are not, there's not much data on this, but a lot of the energy improvements do end up resulting in a better sale of the house eventually later as well. Yeah. Some sh some studies have shown between a four and seven percent increase in the value of the home. Yeah, that's which what I was pays about. for the the uh, most of yeah. the improvements right there. Yeah, I mean, and ultimately the goal is is that you want to be saving. So if you, for example, if you have a loan, because you you need to take out a loan to pay for the upgrades, you want to be saving enough in your utility bill by either not having an oil bill anymore or a gas a propane bill anymore that you can pay for that loan and still save and then of course once it's paid off then now you're just saving and saving that's the idea so that's that's what we're going for that's the goal yeah Sandy. you spoke about solar batteries yes okay so i have tesla solar panels mm -hmm. which by the way just had to be replaced as did my roof and my ceiling in my bedroom. I know, you've had some problems with that. Um, when I asked Tesla about their power wall, mm -hmm. it's like $15,000. It's expensive, yeah. How much would a solar battery cost, and would it really pay for someone like me with my old house mm -hmm. to purchase one? Right, so, you're t so when you say solar battery, it's basically power wall, that's the same thing. So. Uh, the reason why I haven't gotten one yet is the same reason. Right now it's very expensive, yeah. even with the 30% tax incentive. However, there are other people getting in the game. And what happens when more people get in the game? Competition. Prices, Prices. start coming down. So that's why I'm waiting because I know that really it's, kicking yeah, and technology will only get better. So I'm waiting. I'm not going to be an early adopter on that one, okay. but I definitely want to do it because I kept my oil boiler as a supplemental to my heat pumps because only because right now if we were to use electricity i have a little gas generator that i can roll out and plug in that will power it has the ability to power my boiler so at least i would be able to have heat because my generator right now would not be able to withstand the heat pumps they pull too much electricity so until i can have my own battery that I can use the battery to power my heat pumps, I have to keep my boiler. And so I'm waiting. And then as soon as I get that power wall, yeah. that sucker's out of there. You know how much room I'm gonna free up in my garage if I'm having that oil tank and that big furnace? I'm thinking about all the cool things we can have, like a laundry room sink and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, it's going to the curb as soon as as soon as I can. Recycling. recycling. Yeah, recycling, <laughs> recycling. So go ahead. So if you're like at a number one, uh huh. What do you start with? Like you have to do all the things. We need windows. We have to do windows before we do anything else. But windows is not a huge thing, so, so I have to do all of the windows. All yeah. of them. This what kind of, of windows do you have right now? I just have to ask. Nineteen sixty. I have no idea. Double pane, pane single pane, pane, storms. Do you know? They're just nineteen sixty windows. Yeah. They wow. have a, a screen behind them and, and I guess an external storm window. They're so they're just old. Windows. Okay. Okay. So one of the fun things we do when we go to a house is precisely look for this look for the things that are real home runs mm -hmm. like we're looking around the house and all of a sudden i might like oh yeah i found it because like, i go up into the attic there's nothing in the attic and there's the clear spot to, to okay. spend a few so thousand dollars and house. yeah absolutely okay. depends on the house yeah but usually if a house is that bad there are some easy wins to okay. start yeah. with and we always say start with the top and bottom or the bottom and top because those are the highest pressure points in your house your side walls where your windows are not so much so if you've got holes at the bottom, holes at the top, those are the places you gotta go first. Mm -hmm. So, and, and believe it or not, one of the biggest energy savings things, like so simple, is the light bulbs. I, I can't even tell you how much you will, I mean, I, I it's in the statistic. <laughs> you save years. so much by just switching out halogen and incandescent light bulbs for LEDs. I mean, it's so simple. But that's one of the big, low-hanging fruit. So, got any of those old halogens or you know incandescent just get rid of them i mean at this point it's it's actually harder to find a halogen bulb than it is an led bulb so just do it it's not even worth waiting until it burns out just chunk and it and, money wise it's not worth waiting until yeah, it, yeah. and that's hard for a lot of eco warrior people yeah like, no we want to let it burn out let's just just change it it's okay <laughs> right <laughs> so all right I, I count myself in the eco warrior class <laughs> 
other so, other questions about your specific situation? Yeah, does anybody have anything specific about just like, yeah, why does this sort of happen? Or? Well, I guess I wonder, are, are, you know, the idea is not to throw everything in the dump. Right. Is there anybody refurbishing windows? I mean, oftentimes, like, we just re recall one that had just popped up. Does, but, you know, you need somebody to put the gas back in the middle. When you're yeah. 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 So a couple of things on that. So Ulster County is working on a, res a reuse center where you can take things that people can then come and reclaim. However, I will say, if you put windows on Facebook Marketplace or, or Craigslist and just say, hey, I'm giving this away, people will want them because they'll either make greenhouses out of them. Um, glass is one of those things I find people want. You'll find people, crafters, some you know people trying to, you know, oh, maybe they want the old the frame. Window, okay. Why go through yeah. the whole right. re everything so, once you get a good window? So yeah. st stripping it, repainting it, caulking it around mm -hmm. the edges. Uh, oftentimes, if they weren't installed well, there's a lot of air leakage. There are simple ways to help reduce that air leakage. Yeah. But one of the elegant things that we've been finding and encouraging more is uh, window interior window inserts. I don't know if you've uh, seen these. Seen them. Um, yeah. Uh, where it's just a little foam edge, a black foam edge or on a plexiglass edge, yeah. or a rubber edge on, on a plexiglass, mm -hmm. nice nice piece, and you just take it up to your window and go. And now you have, in a sense, in essence, another pane on your window, right. and you, it, it disappears. Uh, it's it's just kind of disappears into the into the view. Um, very simple and elegant way for people to improve improve their windows without needing to replace but it. Yeah, and if you be removed in warm weather, if you wanted to, open if you wanted, if you to, wanted open to open it, it. You know so you choose windows that you're not going to open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if you have, say, a historical window, like a yeah. leaded glass oh, window yes. that would be really expensive to replace, or you don't want to replace, but yet maybe it's only single pane. You put the endo window insert in there. You're, I mean, and, 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 you know, you're just visually looking at that window anyway. It's not functional, but it's pretty to look at. Storm window, but. Yeah, yeah and exactly. It works, and it works great. They so work really great. Where do you get them? I've never. It's called there. The one that we refer to the most is called Indo Window. And w. yeah, and when I'll put that on the resource list for everybody. Thank you. Um, very simple. You can you measure the window yourself. You can tell them what you need, and they ship you what you need. But this with yeah. plexiglass, with some decent plexiglass, you can order that yourself, cut it yourself. It's a DIY project with a little bit of YouTube research and a little bit of try a trial and error. You'll, you can do it yourself too. Okay. What about like big windows? Yeah, they're great for that too. Like huge windows. Yeah, we've seen, you know, like your window. Well, that's what I'm talking at about. Over there. Because that's that cold one. So <laughs> many contractors, yeah. if they have something to weatherize it, yeah, and no one can think that of big it. window is a great window for an window window insert. Okay, so you I can put actually, you in touch with the CEO, Sam. Yeah, because I'll need. Well, there's one. Two, yeah, you have big windows. I know. I painted three, them. Four, <laughs> and then those, five, six. Those spaces become more comfortable to sit in your chair. Yeah, well. absolutely. That's that's the really that's important. Okay. Yeah, and and a lot of people when we do assessments and we come in, they're really cold. And we walk in their house and they've got like this picture window here. Yeah. There's all these, and we're like, oh, well, that's the problem. Yeah, all that, that there. Be, because, well, that, and really the window is the weakest yeah. R it's, value it's, it's, in your home. I mean, you might have an R, you know, 14 wall, and you get to the window, and the window's an R, an R3. Yeah, so but if that window takes up, you know, 75% of your wall, yeah, you're gonna be cold. There's an interesting, it's less cold air. And it's some of that cold air is coming through, but also people feel colder when they're next to a cold surface. Yeah. Uh, their their bounce when you're next to a regular wall, we're getting some bounce back of radiation. Mm -hmm. And when you get near a window that just absorbs that, people feel cold. It's really a weird. Because phenomenon. it's really hard to heat that mm -hmm. those two spaces. Yeah. Well, you've got that crawl space too. We talked about. It's probably you need to be addressed. Floor. So you got a dirt okay, we'll dirt, go over there. Dirt floor basement. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, one other question. Mm -hmm. Do you have any resources for walk-in attic doors that are? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That that's a recommendation Tons. too. Yeah. Uh, I built them. You can. Uh, how how DIY are you? <laughs> oh, my husband's really DIY. Then okay. this is a great DIY yeah. project. I mean, um, I've seen people just glue stuff on. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I make is a. a, a I call it a coffin lid, but maybe that's not the best term to use <laughs> when I'm doing. Um, however, it's a, a box made out of foam board okay. with just a walk-in attic. Together. So it's just an attic door. Oh, it's just an attic door. Okay. Yeah, walk -in so attic. sure. Yeah, just 
foam on the back, good weather stripping, you're done. Um, however, if the walls going up to the walk-in attic are empty and not insulated, and you could tell with the infrared camera and some other techniques. You can also drill a hole, by the way. We brought this little tool. It's a little boroscope. You can drill a hole and stick it in and look, and look in the television camera and see what's going on. Um, so you'd find out if, if those walls going up the steps are very cold in winter as well, then you might want to do that, just a cover on the top of those stairs. Yeah. Some people have done that. Um, another thing is you just insulate the stairs underneath the stairs and on the wall and the door. Depends. But very doable by yourself and, and for a project. Well, I was just hoping there was, you know, like a, because of the rebates on the door. Mm -hmm. I was hoping somebody had one you could just pick one up. But uh, yeah, so that's not. Yeah. You just put the foam right on the It depends on the, on the door. Foam yeah, rigid foam board, not the spray foam. It's a rigid foam, foam board. It's, um, okay. Too. No, because for our basement door, because our like basement. Right? Um, it's a foam board about an inch. Yeah. And you could also just replace it with an insulated door, mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. and just have really good weather stripping in a door sweep. That will well, help. That's what I was yeah. looking at because of the rebate that you mm -hmm. would get on the insulated doors now. Mm -hmm. Because that should qualify since yep. that's the envelope. Yep. Yeah. So this is something that's been thinking, I've been thinking of recently. Did you, do we need to stop anything? Okay. Uh, you know this whole effect of the air going up and out uh, throughout the whole year. Uh, like when I when I go to some houses and I see these attic doors, they're like the walk-in sure. attic, and it's got a gap of two inches on the bottom. People never think of the air just rushing out that the whole year. You're yeah. cold. Your hot air is just going out the whole time. And so one recommendation would be let's better the, let's make this door better and let's make it more airtight. And that it, it's like one of these invisible things that you're losing yeah. tons of energy that way. Well, sure. I mean, you just touch the door. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody here have a whole home attic fan? Ha <laughs> ha. We want to get rid of those. Yeah. There's. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. You you. That's a ginormous yes. hole in your attic floor. And ginormous. Perfect. So, and you, yeah. So you can yeah. see out the roof vent. We got a new roof this year, but there's a roof vent. I wish we had known about putting in more insulation, but we didn't. We can, yeah. But um, the ad, the attic vent or the that whole house fan yeah. was a great idea. Not so good for energy efficiency. But Take it out, sheetrock over it, air seal, really good. But then, how do you get the this heat to heat from the attic in the summer? Well, um, imagine that you have an unconditioned vented attic you probably have soffit vents you probably have a ridge vent and it sounds like you have the roof vent that's yeah. all you need that's the answer there is it's yeah. going to stay hot but what we're going to make sure is that the floor has enough insulation yeah. so that's not a problem for the house below this nice blanket keeps the house below either cooler or warm or whatever the, whatever you're okay. yeah. the, the so then are people putting large heaters up there that's a great thing for uh mm -hmm. putting in the south putting yeah. your water heater up in your attic that's is a great water. idea okay. uh-huh um the water heaters right now are generally recommended for this climate, this area, are for a basement or garage. Um, but that's, that's uh, yes, you oftentimes can get out all, nearly free heat <laughs> by putting a water heater up there. <laughs> and so one thing that we often recommend to people, if, um, if you have a situation where your air handler, if you have forced, forced air or um, air conditioning and your air handler happens to be in the attic, and your ducting happens to be in the attic. Often we will recommend changing the thermal boundary from that floor to the roof because what that does is that now your ductwork is in your envelope. And so if you spring a leak in your ductwork, it's not as big of a deal if you're maybe, you know, putting a little air conditioning or a little heat in your attic, it's not really that big of a deal because it's within that boundary. Um, but to have your duct work in an unconditioned space that has a lot of temperature swings, if it's not insulated really, really well or sealed up really, really well, it doesn't, it doesn't work as well. It's not as efficient. So that's some things that we have recommended to people. Yeah. All right, Mike. If you wanted to uh, replace windows or your building and you want to put mm -hmm. in a, a very uh, open uh, feel, Mm -hmm. Is there a product, a mm -hmm. window product that is effective and has a good organ? Yeah, you're going to want to go with a triple pane, either a Krypton or Argon gas filled window. So it's the, that will have the best R value that you can get. You may even, depending on which side of the house it is on, you may want to go with like a low E insulating glass or one that has um, some film on it. 
that you know will protect you from uh, getting too much sun or losing too much heat. Yeah. I'll hook, you up. I'll hook you up with somebody that knows a lot about windows. We're finding that there are some triple pane window alternatives uh, for new windows that are about the same price as double pane Andersons. So yeah. They're Great. from Go they're the from triple. Europe. They're they're mm -hmm. from Poland. They're tilt and turn windows, so they actually open to the inside and they tilt in versus swinging out. And they have a very robust like locking mechanism, so they're latching. The most inefficient window is a double hung window. The ones that slide up and down like that, a casement style window that cranks out that latches in and pulls in, is going to be more efficient um, and less leaky than double hungs. But we continually see problems with double hungs, especially some of the cheaper vinyl ones. They're just the channels leak. They leak from. I mean, it's not uncommon to see some real problems with those. Yeah. Do you know if there's? Um, I heard a little bit, but I don't even know mm -hmm. if it's true. If there's some rebates for if you put new windows in when you're a senior? Um, there are, I don't, I mean, you can get more money through the Comfort Home Program if you're replacing windows that are Energy Star qualified. Um, They're over 50 years old. Yeah, um, not, not, I don't think, it's more income qualified with the NYSERDA programs okay. versus age qualification, unfortunately. I know in New Jersey years ago they did it because my brother did it with his mother-in-law's house. Wow. And Great. every window was replaced. Yeah. Some seniors, if they're getting snap or heap, oh, I didn't that. fit I didn't into that in fit into that yeah. weatherization program through the Department of Energy where they will do some window replacement. Mm -hmm. So I mean lower income, you know, seniors may income qualify for some of these programs. Mm -hmm. For sure. I didn't know if it was income from a senior. Yeah. But I don't qualify yeah. for anything. Worth, worth checking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. You realize I have to knock my whole house down. What? <laughs> oh, you have It's a got problem. every problem. I know. You well, your house is very old, Sandy. Yes. <laughs> oh, Does anybody boy. know if they have uh, empty walls? Yeah, yeah, we do. We can't believe the flipper did not do the kitchen wall. Yeah, well. Okay. <laughs> so some of the old houses built before even uh, 1960 and uh, on, on, especially the earlier 1920s and earlier, just don't have anything in the walls. Nothing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's nothing. having worked on a crew, one of the most satisfying jobs is to take off a little bit of the siding, drill a hole, and then we work a tube up the wall, and we can hear it uh, filling up with cellulose just... Like then <laughs> it's such a satisfying work to hear that house get insulated. Yeah, makes them, it does make a big difference. <laughs> and that is one of the things I will say on the, the home energy score when the home is modeled, if the walls are empty, that is one of the primary uh, and priority recommendations is get the walls up to R14. Yeah. So which means the equivalent of like a three and a half, four inch wall with fiberglass at a minimum. Parents' house up in Yankee, like years ago, when they redid the kitchen, the walls were filled with newspapers. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, I that's not it. uncommon. And they took the the and they were, yeah, everything yeah. folded and folded and all the way filled up, but every single section was full of newspapers. And imagine, like, oh. so imagine they did well, that for got a fire on the house. Well, cellulose is recycled newspapers, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> chopped I up. <laughs> I don't think the I, I don't think the yeah. newspaper was fire treated though. Um, oh, probably not. And it settled over the years. And mine was little pieces of gray paper, my mm -hmm. attic. About the papers were about this oh. long and like bunched up. Oh. That's that cellulose. As long as it was an asbestos. It's tiny. much tinier than that. Oh, vermiculite. This was like <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that they do it with denim too. They take, yes. They shred denim and they yeah. use denim. So there's some yeah. really cool products. There's wool. There's wool oh, really? insulation. The there's jeans, denim. Which is the denim. Um, there's you can use straw bales, cotton. you can use hemp, yeah. Yeah. cotton. Yeah. The newest one that Jeff and I are just like bonkers about is this company called Timber HP. They um, they took over some paper mills up in Maine that had gone out of business, and they have reinvented them into wood fiber insulation. And um, it Benefit. smells good. They're using they're using like wood waste, and yeah, they're it turning like it Christmas into tree. and it doesn't burn. Yeah. The other nice thing about that, they're using uh, leftovers from milling yeah. processes, so it's stuff that would have gone, uh, been burned, uh, 
but now it's stored carbon in a house for the next mm-hmm. 100 plus years. Yeah. That's a, that's a yeah. bonus. Can I, I'm going to talk about spray foam for a minute. Go ahead. All right. So your, um, here's my take ahead. on spray foam. <laughs> spray foam applications are really great in certain situations, but there's been kind of a trend for everybody just to spray foam, spray foam, spray foam. Um, I don't particularly like it for a few reasons. It's highly flammable. Highly flammable. Um, they can treat it with an intumescent paint that's an ignition barrier that will slow it down. But if you put a house that is insulated with the attic insulated with spray foam next to a house that maybe has mineral wool in it, one's going to be gone in three minutes. The other one's going to still be sizzling after three hours. So I don't like it for that reason. It's also um, highly toxic. The application process is very toxic for people that have to put it on. This is why they're fully suited and they have respirators with an air tube to the outside. You cannot occupy the home for 24 to 48 hours afterwards. Um, And it encases anything that it touches in plastic. So if you have a home that you've spray foamed, if say your home in 50 years is going to be demolished for something other purpose, you, you can't reuse that lumber anymore. It's not salvageable. So you're robbing the future of being able to recycle and reuse those materials. So not a great fan of it. It is um, used a lot for rim joists down in the basement. Um, you know, two inches of closed cell spray foam. It's very easy to put in those areas. I'm just not a big fan of it to be used in walls or in rafters or in attics. It's just my two cents. Yeah, it has a it has some great specific applications yeah. over everything. Yeah, um, they're in, and it is also a big contributor to greenhouse gases. They're very environmentally um, it has a huge carbon footprint. The the spray foam chemicals do. There are some that have come out that are a little greener, um, but it's still not the best. So if you can do something else, I highly re- recommend going with an alternative product from a sustainability standpoint. <coughs> How many of you all are, are in considering rental on your home, or are you uh, just looking for some new appliances, or you know, where are you in your house journey? Go ahead. Yeah. You do have something. Hmm? Hmm? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I thought we wanted a uh, a heat pump. I I do, but now I see we're supposed to get an assessment first. And you do the assessment, but you don't do heat pumps. We don't. We we know enough of the contractors that we can say, I trust them. I think they're going to do a good job. And a lot of the people that that we have sent our assessment clients to um, treat them very well because they know that they need to, <laughs> or we're not going to send them clients anymore. So um, we we have a list of, of heat pump contractors that that we like and love. Mm-hmm. So happy to recommend people for you. Mm-hmm. Um, same with insulation companies, same with the solar people. So yeah, we've, we've spent some time building some relationships with folks. So mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I just wanted to say, if you do buy a new appliance, any kind of new appliance, mm-hmm. always look for Energy Star models. Mm-hmm. Okay. Try to go Energy Star with anything. They even have Energy Star televisions now. They get the Energy Star seal. Mm-hmm. So, um, and also if you're replacing any fixtures in your home, look for the EPA water sense. They um, they use less water. So, you know, water conservation is very important. They use less water, but um, in like with the shower heads, if you get a water sense one, you're not gonna use as much water, which consequently, if you're taking a hot shower, that means you're not gonna be using as much hot water and you won't be paying to heat as much water if you're not using as much. So look for water sense appliances and um, fixtures. They're designed to feel similar to a full. Yep. Yep. I don't think I've, I, yeah, I don't think I've ever noticed a difference. So, and toilets too. There's, you know, the water since toilets only use like, it has to be 1.28 gallons per flush or, or less. If you see the, like the dual flush toilets, a lot of those are low flow, low mm-hmm. flow toilets. Um, so it's important to conserve where we can. Other folks, where are you on your, where what decisions are coming at you these days? So, well, we're looking at, okay, what happens, uh, you know, we're this far in the life of this appliance, what mm-hmm. should we be looking at next? But we also had some drafts, so we, we went and um, sealed around the joists in the basement. Great. Um, you know, we did a lot of stuff when we moved in 20 years ago mm-hmm. that, you know, I did 
windows are starting to fail and all of that. Mm. So now it's a now it's to fix what the flipper did wrong while we're in there and mm. you know it's a cost effective thing. You can just replace everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for the windows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kitchen, kitchen appliances, we wash and dryer, new hot water heater. Did you did you go Energy Star? I have Energy Star. No, okay. Good. At least, at least that. Good. I'm really but it excited. is a gas, big, beautiful gas stove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Double <laughs> oven. <laughs> gonna have to wait for a generational change on that one. Yeah. yeah. Any, anybody else in there? Is there a journey here? Is anybody looking to get an EV? Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. People right. are buying them in, in my, you know, they're just they're, everybody's trying them out. Mm -hmm. It's easy to put your uh, stuff in at home. You know, if you've got half the people I know have employers that let them. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be going through transition the next few decades. Yeah. Absolutely, uh, it's you know we didn't we went from horses to cars. Uh, yeah. We went from coal fire plants to other to other kinds. So it's happening, and there are going to be bumps along the way. So we'll look for ways to make it as smooth as possible. So does the state have an estimate of how much money they expect every home owner to put into the house? Oh gosh, I, I mean thirty percent is not a whole. Well, a typical right. house changeout can be 20, 20 to 30,000. Yeah, it yeah. depends on what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So look for scales of bulk, look for the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest thing to do first. It's going to, it's, this is a tough, tough situation. We're against really? one of the biggest world issues we've ever had as a species you know, right my now. My house is 100 years old <laughs> next year. So the basement's not insulated. There is a ton of stuff on mm -hmm. your old house needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It seems to me like it's easy to just mount it and, and put, a, put a real house up. And it's a little harder in this part of the world, in this part of the United States, it costs yeah. more per house because we're predominantly fossil fuel. We live in an extreme climate zone for the compared to the other southern states and all. And we have older housing stock, so it's yeah. a particular problem. So you go to Albany and you look at all this old houses mm. stock. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. these old basements. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of wondering what the governor is thinking. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you go out west and you can see some very nice energy efficient homes. Yeah. And it seems like we're doing a lot of retrofit that isn't really going to do as well as if we just knocked it down, sold the wood off, and so forth. Yeah, you would think that, but the process of knocking it down and rebuilding, there is a lot of embodied carbon in doing that. That, well, that depends it's, how old your house is. Yeah. Right? I mean, some of these houses are like barns or nothing. Well, that is true, and yeah. we have seen some so, of them. So yeah. if we can, you can join the group I'm working with on my day job, and we'll figure this out together. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. right? And, you know. I mean, that's a very, that's a rough number. That's like, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's um. There's no doubt that this problem is is difficult to solve, and and that's you know Jeff's working on this. The large scale adoption, like how do you scale? How do you scale this nationwide? Um, it's not going to be easy, but we got to start somewhere, and at least we have a solution. And the solution is to electrify. It's how do we do it? I mean, funding is a huge is a huge issue. People aren't going to do things they can't afford to do. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's this huge amount of, of incentives that the, you know, that the federal government is putting out there. And, you know, the people that are going to suffer the most are our lowest income folks. If we don't help them through this energy transition, you know, they're going to be stuck holding the bag trying to support an aging fossil fuel infrastructure when they're already energy burdened. And that's why a lot of the funding through um, IRA and also NYSERDA is focused heavily on low to moderate income. You know, our Justice 40 tracks, our disadvantaged communities, because we know we have to bring those people with us. We have to. Cool. So, But uh, if you just look at the people that are sitting here, mm -hmm. okay, now you're not sure. I'm not going to say everybody is a senior, mm -hmm. but most everybody here are seniors. Do I really want to go out at my age, and I'm not telling you how old I am, mm -hmm. 21, uh, and get a loan for $30,000 to no. make my house more energy efficient? No. No, because 
I'm not going to live long enough to pay that loan off. But if you if you do uh, ten thousand dollars worth equivalent of ten thousand dollars worth of work, and the attic is shown to be really good, and you get a nice heat pump uh, to do address some of your house, you, that house may be able to sell for an extra twenty thousand dollars <laughs> more. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and you may be more comfortable. I'm right. And that's, I mean, that's and, great. Right. And you'll be more comfortable. <laughs> and you'll be more comfortable. So right. you okay. you are right. It's a long term game in many ways. Yeah. It, it is, yeah. and even ten thousand dollars to some of us mm -hmm. is a yep. big nut to crack. Yeah. No. I, I would love to make my house completely energy efficient, electrify, electrification, mm -hmm. get rid of my oil burner. Um, right. I, I do have just put in 18 inches of insulation in my attic. Yay! Oh, cool. Cool. The first time I went through NYSERDA and Yay. the whole program. Great. I mean, so I really have tried, yeah. but man, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah that is. So are there any good things coming out? You know, you get a phone call every once in a while for a to buy your soul as of a, a farm. Mm -hmm. Right. Are the towns going for this? You know, in the West, you have to so. a lot of you're good so, at pushing your yeah. buttons. <laughs> in Germany, they're sending yeah. steam to all the apartment buildings. Yeah. It's yeah. not up yeah. to each individual person to throw in a year salary. Yeah. So, so one of the other many things that I do is I sit on a board of directors for a company called Mid Hudson Energy Transition. Um, we are a community choice aggregation administrator. We're working with the city of Kingston right now. Community choice aggregation is um, buying renewable electricity supply on behalf of a municipality and then everybody in that municipality gets enrolled in it uh, unless you opt out. So you're using the power of people, number of people to negotiate better electrical rates and better sources of electricity. So um, there are some other counties, Sustainable Westchester has a CCA, um, and some of the other counties around here have enrolled in CCAs to help members of that community get lower pricing and get them from renewable sources. So that's a, municip a municipality driven um, thing. We're also in the city of Kingston looking into what's called a thermal energy network, very similar to what Europe does, and that we're using ground source via blocks, like blocks of buildings, blocks of homes, interconnecting them. So they're sharing this source of energy that's from the ground. Um, and that's kind of what- Efficiently, more, yeah. more than a, a single home yes. or apartment building. Yeah. So Central Hudson is very interested in this. Um, there's um, a charrette that the state has been doing um, with a bunch of different utilities and a bunch of people that are interested in they're doing some pilot projects with thermal energy networks. So honestly, I feel very privileged to live in a state that's really thinking about how do we do this? And they're really putting a lot of money into figuring out how yeah. to do it. Um, Kentucky, but we're, Kentucky rebate programs? Florida, the state of Florida said, we don't want the IRA money. They gave their money away. Nobody in Florida is gonna be able to take advantage of the IRA money. There's a couple other states that like, nah, Nothing but how do you take a rural area like ours? Yeah. You're talking about the city of Kingston, right? Yeah. And apartment buildings yep. and yep. square blocks of, yeah. of community, of, mm -hmm. you know, developments. Yeah. How do you take somebody like like Shondaly Crawford and try and connect them all? Yeah, you're, you're, well, it's, you're, it's, you're it won't work for that. Electric co-op, just like they mm -hmm. used to have in all the other rural areas. But but. What but she's doing with like Kingston, the thermal, the thermal energy, right? Is, well, thermal is, energy, you can't because yeah. it's spread out so right. much. Yeah, right. But you could where they're close to each other. Right, but mm -hmm. like where I live is like that a trailer to, park, right? The town, yeah. you know, and microgrids are another thing that we're looking at in Kingston. Is right. how do we microgrid certain, like the hospital, the community center, maybe the high school, maybe BOCES. Get them on a microgrid so that when we have these major climate events, these weather events that's knocking the grid out for three, four days, like that ice storm we had, those can be up and running on their own little microgrid. So at least community members can go, stay warm, get food, have shelter. And people, so we're looking and people have been saying that here for yeah. years. I've been to several school board meetings. Yeah. And even 10 years ago, they were saying, why don't you put it on the roof? You got a big roof. Yeah. At the school. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got they solar now on the school. They have solar I mean, we have school. solar now on the, in the school yeah. districts. Yeah. So uh, I think keep yeah. Saying, yeah. five of the seven the buildings. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to do anything to get it like so. This is basically biting into the profits of the companies. Mm -hmm. If I was on NYSA, I would be like, let's do something along these lines. Are they doing anything? 
So, so what I think is very interesting is that the utilities see the writing on the wall. Yeah. There are even some pilot programs now where they're saying for a gas line that goes into a neighborhood, let's see if we can help the people who are in this gas line for these 12, 20 homes to weatherize their house where it's most effective to reduce their energy costs, put in heat pumps, and we're going to take out the line. Yeah. So the heat, the, the utilities themselves are even seeing the writing on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I would hope that like the book publishers would open e-books, right? Could you so get the small mm -hmm. things you need to be put on the shelf, which we, we, we keep doing yeah. programs like that? A lot of uh, a lot of if you look on your bill, if you get your bill in the mail or get or look <laughs> online, like look at my bill. <laughs> um, there, you'll see a lot of times they'll say get a free smart, you know, or learning thermostat or you know seventy five dollars off on a thermostat. Changing out your thermostat, if you've got one of those old rotary dials to a smart one, that's a great DIY energy saver because it starts to learn your habits and then you don't have to worry about it and it starts regulating your temperature in the house. Um, yeah, programmable smart thermostats are, are really great to have. Actually, the kind of cool thing about it in my experience with my 100 year old house is that it gives up in the summer and it will tell you that your air conditioning is turning on too much and just raise the heat four degrees. <laughs> we don't I know we gotta stop. So I'm like, I'm <laughs> Speaking of the summer, yeah. one of the things that we put in there is if you have a ceiling fan, if you run your ceiling fan in the summer, you can actually raise your thermometer or your thermostat by four degrees and you're not going to feel, your body will not feel a difference because of the fact that you're just circulating that air and you're getting that breeze over your skin. Ceiling fans are wonderful air movers in the winter too because you can reverse them. Mm -hmm. So, all right, folks. All right. We are